And we're back with some Redcon. Yeah, I should be doing some Prison Architect today, but uh, I'm still doing the campaign missions. It seems there's a lot to learn about that game. Anyway, this over here is the guy in charge of our uh, our, our faction, and his name is uh, the Fuhrer or something like that. Yeah, we're definitely the bad guys. We are totally the bad guys. Anyway, let's uh, try and explain this game, which I consider to be a game I enjoy, but I don't think it's actually a good game. But it's just one of those games that you can play, and it's nice and sort of handy that way. Anyway, this here is our little fort. We use this fort to fight other forts. And that's pretty much the meat and veg of the entire game. However, you can pause, take your time, choose to shoot stuff. So let's uh, maybe give some examples here. The normal policy is you pick their worst gun or something along those lines. You target it and then you shoot it. That's it. If you kill the gun, you then move on to the next gun and keep repeating until their guns are all gone. And then things get a little bit more complicated from there. And... Yeah, there we go. Right, you can see these red symbols. Those red symbols indicate they have returned fire, and those that's where the bullets are headed. So you can try dodging people and stuff like that. We're, we're not really going to care just yet. Instead, we just target the next gun, and done. Now, there's a few other things that can go on, but we'll wait until these uh, their turrets are all destroyed. All right, here we go. See these guys over here? Those guys are building a gun back up again. I, I don't want them doing that. That would be unfortunate. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have been a little bit faster about that, but that's okay. We'll just blow it up again. Oh, do you see those chunks that appeared there? That was one of their infantrymen getting turned into paste. That's uh, actually a very important thing about this game. Even if we kill this gun, the fight will still continue. It will keep continuing until all of their people are dead. And that's sort of the second part of this game where... You, you get past the early part and you realize, oh wait, even though I've killed all of the stuff that can fight back, so long as there is infantry alive to keep repairing things, the game continues on. And then this is where you come into some other things. For example, we can switch this mortar over to use shredder bombs. Now shredder bombs will take more ammunition, which our fort has a limited amount of. So for example, we have plus three ammunition at the moment. If we activate the shredder bombs, that goes down to plus one. So it costs us plus two ammunition. You need to make sure you have enough ammunition in your fort to use some of the specials. Otherwise, it'll slow down your reload times and cause problems. And then we can use those uh, shredder bombs to try and kill their infantry. Unfortunately, that's usually not perfect. The reason being, infantry, their infantry sometimes have this magical ability to dodge because they'll know shredder bombs are coming. So I eventually just stopped using shredder bombs after a while. It wasn't worth the effort. Anyway, let's kill these guys and get back to uh, the next part of the game. Yo, down here, you see this green bar? That's the health of the base. If you manage to reduce the health of the base to zero, it also destroys their fort. You can reduce the health of their base to zero without destroying all of the weapons and guns. This is usually more counts though when they repair stuff, and then when they repair stuff it comes back up again. Now, that's the basic mechanics of the game. Keep your people alive, repair up the turrets of yours that they damage, try and kill all of their stuff, preferably kill some of their guns so to reduce their ability to return fire, then kill all of their people so they can't repair anything anymore, and then just finish off the last of their turrets and stuff. There you go, this is the score, credits and experience. The credits are very important, and you would prefer to get more of those. Oh, and as you level up, you will gain access to new weapons, equipment, things like that. Eh. And once all that's done, you get a little bit of storyline. It's all pointless. No one cares about it. And over here, we get to do, go into customize. This is where you get to build onto your base, change around the movement of stuff, add in guns, remove guns, defenses, etc. First things, let's look at the layout. Uh, there are four different layouts for this fort you start with. There's multiple forts as you go through and you play all the different levels. But this one here, the, uh, there's the standard layout. And down here you notice you've got 900 hit points. That's the total hit points of your fort. Once they're all gone, your fort is destroyed and you lose the round. 20 power. This power is used to power devices and it's also power for your guns. But your guns usually spend more ammunition than power. And then you've got four people here. That's how many infantry you'll start with. And those infantry can be used to repair your turrets and keep everything operational. Also, putting people on your guns usually gives those guns benefits, usually faster reloading, but some of the weaker guns will only get an accuracy bonus. However, I, I, what I can't understand is, this is one of the reasons why I say it's, I enjoy this game, but I'm sure it's a good game. If you just get this Fort Raptor, the extra weapons and concrete layout, you just get more hit points, more power, more gun ammo, and more people. There's, there's literally no downside for taking it as far as I can see. It's just more. You get more of everything, okay? And then you get Fort Raptor over here. Fort Raptor gives you slightly less hit points but and slightly less ammo, but it does give you more power. And it also gives you extra defenses. See this little defensive turret here? You can put defensive turrets on your base. And then we get Fort Raptor. Extra manpower and cover. I usually just prefer manpower. Manpower just allows you to repair and stay in the fight longer. 
All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go under utilities. And this is where money comes in. Every time you finish those fights, you get a little bit of money and you can use that money to buy upgrades for your fort. You can't buy everything, but you can't sell, which means you can end up buying stuff you don't need or don't like long term, which means there's dead ends in this, which I find really bad. They should allow you to sell stuff, but whatever. We're going to buy the active defensive control system because this is always a good thing to have. Uh, then we're going to place that in there. This allows us to place turrets on this thing. Uh, let's see. You notice here we have four power. Putting this in, it costs us four power, but it adds 100 hit points. It, well, it, it has 100 hit points of damage it can take before it gets destroyed. Then for defenses, we're going to get one of these auto cannon turrets. This is going to cost us 400 bucks, and we're going to place that down. And, nope. Now, that's, see, this is where we've run into a problem. This thing costs one power and two ammunition, which means this is costing us, well... It's bringing us below the power threshold, so it means even if we use it, it switches it off. Reason being, it can't actually support it, which is why our power and everything goes all wonky. Looking around, there's no way we're going to be able to put on the defences, keep all the power up and all that, but that's okay. So you can power off buildings and leave them eh, unused. So we can put this defence in, it just won't be active by default. And what we'll have to do is power off some buildings. Probably the medical centre. If we take off the medical centre, everything would work fine. However, we can power that off during the game and turn it back on when we need it while powering off other things. This sort of juggling is going to become very common as you go deeper in. Now, let's see. Currently, these basilisks are a bit weak, uh, so let's just go with the Hydra Assault Cannon spam. It is a very, very popular strategy. People like using the Hydra spam for reasons that will become blazingly clear. Now, there's this perk section. Currently, we've got the Onslaught ability, which is actually quite a nice one, but however, it's the weakest one of them. It's not great, but you get other perks as you go through that will improve the, uh, the damage of yourself. Now, this starts up. You get to have a look over here and decide, ooh, do I want to fight this or not? If you don't, you just hit Escape. You can go back in, uh, and you can retry if you want and redo your fort. However, you do lose your win streak, as far as I'm aware, which is usually not great. Anyway, uh, sh what we're going to do here is turn that off. That means all of our weapons are on. By turning off the med bay, all of our weapons become active. And we're going to set you to maximum firepower. We've got, we got one shell left. I don't think that's enough. You see, if we turn that guy on... Ooh, we are just barely under. Perfect. These two, they're going to do some serious damage. Unfortunately, they do have some point defense here. See those little turrets? They're going to shoot back at us. That's going to be an issue, but we can work our way around that. And everyone else is just going to be set to open fire. Fire at will. Now, you'll notice we're going to put this guy on whole fire for now. Yeah, we want that guy to line up with the others. Ow. Eh. Why are they not repairing that? I was expecting them to repair it. Ah, that is a flashbang. For example, this guy over here has the option to fire different shells. Oh, this guy doesn't have them. There, ah, there it's flashbang. We could set this gun to fire a flashbang that will stun enemy infantry. Unfortunately... Enemy infantry have a tendency to avoid our flashbangs, so it's a bit of an annoyance. But hey, we'll figure it out as we go. Alright, is this almost finished? Yeah, that's about to fire. That's about to fire. And you get back in there for a minute, if you wouldn't mind. Perfect. Now the thing about these is they fire a nice big stream of shells, so we're just going to let them fire away, and they should basically knock most of those things quite down quite a bit. And we're going to let the mortar... Oh, no, stop that. We're going to let the mortar fire as well to destroy that one. And this one here is going to continue firing down here and hopefully destroy that one. We've already destroyed one turret. We're working on the second one. Uh, mortar, you can grab that. You, you can grab that one as well. And you two will actually just put on whole fire. This is your basic thing. You're sort of doing this surgical deconstruction of the enemy base bit by bit. If, ah, now that was a shredder bomb. That really hurt that infantry there. And since we don't want that infantry to die, we're going to get that infantry down there. Power this off. Power this on. One thing I learned is, uh, yeah, medic up your troops quite regularly. Yeah, uh, run out of there. And you are about to take out that mortar. Yeah, grand. And you go back up there and start repairing. Ow. Yeah, that was another shredder bomb. You can get back up there after you're healed. And done. And that's what we'll keep doing. Shredding these down until there's nothing left. Oh, and here's a big volley. Murder them all. Yep. It's beautiful. Ah, nice. Fortunately, this guy over here seems to be well protected by this. This bullets seem to inter intercept perfectly with those. That is bad. So we're going to use the mortar to take out that one. And this guy here, his job is going to be to suppress this. They seem to be repairing that quite frequently. So we're going to suppress that by hitting it again. And until it's repaired, 
it dies really easy. That's why I like to keep at least one of these around. They make great, brilliant suppression tools. And while those guys are doing that... My, oh wow, they're, they're actually repaired that faster than we could kill it. That is um, mildly embarrassing. For our next trick, we're going to open this up to assault. This here is the point defense section. It's the same thing as ours down here. It powers these turrets. If we destroy that, it reduces... Well, it turns off these weapons. If we d damage it and they can't operate it, it reduces its effectiveness. So let's get this guy here to open fire on that. Uh, this guy doesn't need to open fire. We'll hold off on you for a second. You can fire there and you can fire there. Okay. Once this is destroyed, it should make... Oh, that's the problem. Their point defense system is actually intercepting our bullets far more frequently than I would like. Oh, that is really frustrating. That point defense system is quite effective. Oh well, never mind. We'll just have to keep killing their stuff. Right, you. That goes down right now. Uh, if we can hit that, uh, you can hit that. And I want to see if these uh, these rounds start getting through or if the point defense is going to take them out. Oh, that point defense is way too thick. Okay, we'll double down. If we can knock this out, it's game over for them because we'll just be able to ship them to death. Oh, come on. There we go. Perfect. Another point defense cannon goes offline, and we can just shoot him to death slowly but surely. We don't have to care too much. Ah, uh, yeah, kill him, kill him, kill him. Done, done, done. Now let's fast forward this on to the end. And this is the guts of the game. Oh, yeah, and this is the guy who's the leader. As you can see, he is clearly super duper evil. Like, he's, he's even wearing that, like, the, the Roman Emperor things on him. And his name is the Fuhrer, or whatever it is. Obviously, obviously super evil. Oh, here we go. We gotta do perk. Cannons reload 3% faster. So if you have any cannons, oh, I don't think they're cannons. They're more, uh, they're a different type of gun. Anyway, there's also other stuff we get to do. We can customize this when any new stuff becomes available. As you can see, we're kind of stuck. So let's just see what the next mission has in store. However, what's up here? This is war progress. I skipped the first 6%, but there's about 100 battles. This is, that was about the ninth one. Each, the, the war progress goes up by 1% every battle, meaning there's about 100 battles to win in this game. Let's, uh, let's maybe skip this forward a bit. After a few more battles, we get access to a few more shiny weapons, like the Alistair Siege Cannon. This allows you to fire incendiary shots, toxin shots, and flashbang shots. Very good all-round cannons. Not a fan of them, though. However, it also gives us access to some new utilities, including the Fleet Command and the Armory. And you sort of have to go this route in a weird way. Let me demonstrate. You see, when you go into a fight... If you can get a fleet command up, you can get a balloon over to help you out. Uh, give me a minute while I pick our targets. So the plan here is quite simple. We're going to take all of these guns. Realize that our mortar can't do jack because it can't hit here. And there's this overhang over here. Decide, no, 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 no. We're going to go back out here. Damn it. We're going to go back out here. And we're going to change this. What we want to do instead is get rid of that mortar and replace it with something that can shoot a bit better. There we go. Much better. Now let's go back in here and kick some butt. That is as follows. We want to take out their point defense system down here and then send a balloon over and capture their base. Now to do that, we need to drill a hole through to this section. See, the thing is, this uh, if we try and get to hit this now, it's 35% accuracy. 35 here, however, it's 70% on the outside. If we kill this turret, then we'll get a 70% accuracy bonus on these visible things. We need to have a direct line of sight to everything to get maximum accuracy. We tried to aim deeper inside a place, like say here, you get reduced accuracy. If we kill that turret, it would increase our accuracy. So what we want to do is try and kill this, preferably before our balloon arrives. And then once our balloon arrives, we want to have destroyed their point defense so that we can send over our people to kill their people and take over their base. If we can capture their base, we get more money. And that's sort of the whole point here. We want to maximize our money income, namely because it just adds a little bit of difficulty to this as well. Ow. But they are going to try and shoot us, kill us, and we don't have any point defense, so their missiles will be quite painful. But our plan is just to survive long enough. And I think these are about to do their big volleys. Yeah, here we go. And this should be enough, should it? Oh yeah, just about. So you, continue shooting there. You, continue shooting there, there, and there. Excellent. And then we'll just let them continue on like this for a while. All right, after a bunch of shooting and dumb stuff, we're going to call in the airship. We now have cleared line of sight to their point defense system. Uh, so open fire, everyone. Give them everything you got, the whole lot. Oh, and while, that, while we're waiting for that to happen, we're going to get this guy and position him right there. 
Come on, come on, come on. Killer point defense. Yes! Oh, yes, that's their point defense dead. So, what we have down here is an armory. This armory gives us a bonus. All of our infantry get a machine guns and body armor. Makes them tougher and harder to kill. We're going to hop in here. And we're going to hop over there. Problem is, their point defense could shoot us down. We would prefer if they didn't, which is why we killed their point defense before we left. And they're going to do some serious damage to us while we're on the way over, though. But that's fine. We're not too worried about that. As long as our people arrive, doesn't make a difference. And their point defense is not going to come back up in time. Ooh, so they did target this. This will slow down the transport of our ship. While there's a person manning that, this thing moves faster. There's all sorts of nice little details like that in the game. And here come our people. And out come the jackhammers. Eh. You guys, start moving. Okay, you get in there. You get in there. Start shooting them down. Kill their people. Excellent. That is all of their people dead. Uh, you can go around and start repairing the place. And we shall start chewing this place apart a piece at a time. You two, get over there. You two, get up there. Now all we have to do is we don't actually have to kill everything now. In fact, we can put everyone on hold fire. And then what we can do is just tell these guys to, well, murder all of the weapons. And once all the weapons are gone, the base becomes ours. And there we go. Uh, it says here, takeover. Takeover gives you an extra 25% money. And you sort of want to get into takeovers. No, actually, let me put it phrase another way. If you're playing this for the first time, don't bother with takeovers. It's an extra layer of difficulty. But if you want to maximize your money, you kind of want to play with takeovers to maximize your money if you've played it more than once. I have played this more than once. Now, after a while of just using that fort, they're going to give you some extra fun stuff to do. For example, they give you a command of this place, which is a chemical ordnance facility. And your target is, uh, the target appears to be some kind of hospital. Yes, um, walk away and save your soul. They have zero weapons, like none. No weapons at all. They have two medical facilities, uh, some point defense, and one of those trooper consoles, though. So that could be a problem. So our job is to destroy this hospital. Yep. Yep, that's our, um, that's our gig. We, we gotta destroy this hospital. So, uh, well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to a neurotoxin shell. We want a neurotoxin shell because we, we actually need to have a lot of neurotoxin if we want to win this. This guy here is going to be set to hold fire. Our missiles are going to be set to hold fire. These things are sort of like little puzzles. Uh, puzzles of horror, I suppose. Now, the thing is, when we fire this guy, he's going to activate that point defense. So what we want to do is fire this guy at some point. It'll activate that point defense, but then he takes a while to recharge. And while he's recharging, we're going to unload all our missiles and cannon shells. So that's sort of the plan. And eventually you want to have all five of these sectors just covered in poison gas and everyone dies. Wait for it. Wait for it. Right. We have everyone good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say one missile right there. One missile right there. And then we're going to get this cannon shell and we'll put it yeah, right there is fine. And then we're going to get this guy and target right there. But the, these guys are going to be set to fire. This guy's going to be set to hold for a bit. The problem is his cannon shell has a travel time. So we'll let the missiles fly off, and if we've done this right, and we time it out okay, okay, those missiles are off the screen, we're going to get this cannon here to fire, and when he does, the point defense shoots at it. And then, while that's busy shooting at it, our missiles get to slide in unannounced. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So we managed to sneak in everything we needed. Now, this guy can be set to just, you know what, let's get some fire in there. Yeah, fire would be much more efficient. This poison gas takes ages to dissipate, but if anyone's caught in it, their infantry die. Those little yellow face masks they've got on, they don't protect them from that poison gas, it seems. So then we just wait till everything recharges, and we gotta do this pretty quickly here. So you can go there, you can go there, and this guy can... You know what? Well, just hold on. They launch. We fire this guy. It fires and misses, and the poison gas missiles, yep, they all die. Every single last one of them. Perfect. Then, uh, oh, yeah, we'll have that guy fire off again, and then while he's busy firing, we'll have this guy unload his fire shell right there. I, why are you not, oh, I may have been a bit slow off the draw on that one. Anyway. 
fire shell lands in there. Boom, it starts a fire. We let this place burn down. It'll take a few minutes. These little puzzle missions, missions show up every, every so often, and they kind of break up the monotony of just, well, grinding through enemies. It sort of feels that way after a while, once you kind of get used to it, and you realize that, well, using poison missiles most times is just not very efficient, or using fire missiles, or in general, it's just all cannons. Missiles just don't work on so many enemy types, it becomes problematic. So as you can see, we have now committed some war crimes. Uh, yes, uh, that is just like, it, it instantly gives you that. Ooh, soldiers recover from stun 20% faster. That's actually a nice perk to have. Uh, one second. Stun, stun reduction means if your players get hit by flashbangs and st things like that, they can recover quicker. Auto loaders means their cannons reload faster, but we don't actually have any cannons. There, we do have one access to one other perk, which is... Soldier's death extinguishes fire, dissipates toxins, and repairs 75 HP. That's great if one of your soldiers dies in your base, but if one of your soldiers dies in the opponent's base, it actually helps them. So considering we're going with the kill everything approach, or capture everything approach, usually not that useful to us. After murdering your way through a few more fortresses, you get to another one, Fort Sycamore. Cut them all down, and you get access to a bunch of new stuff, including nuclear reactors. Oh, I hate nuclear reactors. Anyway, this is the new fort, and immediately you just go down to... Layouts and pop down to extra manpower and cover, which as far as I can tell is just the best. Sometimes you do want the extra weapons if you want to put on lots and lots of fire firepower, but just having those extra personnel seems to make such a huge difference. Again, we are going with no point defense, which I which I should stress is a bad idea if you've never played this before. Point defense is actually really good at keeping you alive. But we want to go with capture, capture, and capture some more, which means we need to put in one of these fleet commands so that we can get ourselves one of those airships. We need the armory, so our infantry are really good killers. And then we kind of need the medical bay so that we can make sure everyone's healthy by the time they get to the other side to kill everything. Uh, that means we're kind of limited in what we can do, and we can't really put in point defense because we don't have enough power to support all of this stuff. You've got to make some hard choices. So if we get hit a few more times, it happens. Thankfully, these guys don't have any missiles, but they do have an armory. That's a problem. Uh, that means they're going to be much tougher to kill, and they do have a medical bay. Oh, yeah, no, we got to kill the medical bay, too. Right, uh, do we have enough? Let's check it. Oh, one thing, you can also check in, this, this place is called the Iron Wall. Each place has its own story. You're sort of on your way to get to capital cities and, and level them. And each place has bonuses. For example, this place has super concrete. Fortress, fortresses sustain 8% more structural damage. And these guys have cannons, so they do a lot of damage to your structure when they hit. Weapons deal 20% more damage when for fortress goes under lower structural integrity. Um, this is just to do with as the fortress gets more and more stressed, they're more able to do damage. And Onslaught, all weapons get a 15% reload boost when a target is destroyed. Oh, I would kill for that. That is just that is such a good perk to have. It allows you to do some really major extermination later on. Hopefully we get our chance to use that at some point, but uh, we'll see. Now, do we have enough firepower? I think we do. Excellent. We have just barely enough um, well, ammunition on this fortress. You can see it down here. We have just enough ammunition and just enough power to run everything. That's kind of nice. And you go over here. We want to man the mortars because mortars get a... An operator reduces the reload time by 20% on a mortar. When it comes to these Hydra Assault Cannons, Operator improves weapon accuracy by 10%, which is actually usually pretty handy. And it improves the accuracy on Basilisk by 10% as well. But uh, I'm going to be honest here. Having people manning Hydra Cannons and Basilisk Cannons is not really worth it. You're better having them on Sniper Cannons, uh, Regular Cannons, a bunch of other things. Like these guys here get a massive bonus from having people on them. This guy over here, Basilisk Cannon Mark II. Operator improves weapon accuracy by 10%, and it also reduces reload times on all firing modes. It's quite nice. Anyway, let's just open fire and demolish this thing as quickly as we can. We're going to take a lot of damage, though. Uh, you can start getting in there to repair. Ow, ow. In fact, we're going to get two people down there. Oh, damn. That shell's going to hurt. Ow. I think this is this probably going to... Like, they're going to concentrate fire. Oh, yep. They murdered that one. Well then, you get down there and start repairing that. And Hydra Cannons Blitz, please. Right. Those guys are healed. Excellent. That's one of their guns down. That reduces their firepower. Then we immediately target something else. And we want to start repairing everything. In fact, I think we're going to want to double repair everything. Flashbangs. Nasty. That is really unfortunate. Um, okay, you, down there to help, you, down there to repair. We kind of want to just keep everything as repaired up as possible. Oop, everyone out of there. Run! I'm worried that might be a shredder. No, it's another flashbang. Flashbangs are just as bad as, ooh, 
uh, shredders at times because they will paralyze your people and make you unable to use your men. And this is generally what you're doing. We're stuck in this. Oh, you target there. These guys are starting to repair that and we want to make sure they don't. Uh, they seem to be targeting this a lot, but I'm kind of okay with that. This thing is quite tough. And at the same time, actually, sorry, we'll keep those up there. Uh, this thing is quite tough, and at the same time, it provides shelter for any infantry in it, which means they're far less likely to die. Oh my god. Okay, that's two turrets down. You go there, you go there. Oh, can you get out of there in time? <laughs> Please hit that thing quickly before it repairs. Oh, barely. Barely. Okay, okay. So that means there are two cannons down. They've got two mortars, two cannons, and I think we've hit the point where they can no longer do enough damage to stop us. As in, they can try to uh, wear us down, but we should win out in the long term. You, know, you go up and heal. And now I'm just going to grind them down. So, we've killed all three of the top level turrets. Now that three turrets are gone, they've still got those two mortars, which are annoying, but I think our plan should be to take out this. If we take out this armory, that reduces their ability to... that re means they lose their bonus for, from it. So they don't have machine guns, they don't have flak vests, and then we can send over some infantry and kill them all. Now they do still have a medical bay, and normally I would be all up for killing that medical bay as soon as possible, but right now we need to keep them reasonably suppressed. Uh, actually, we can stick a mortar shell right there. Ow. Perfect. Okay, so that's done, that's done, that's done. And you, you know what? Just keep targeting that. You two need to get healed up. And you can go back in there and start repairing that. You just want to keep cycling your healer people, get them healed up, make sure everyone's doing their jobs, and then get everyone back to healing again as soon as you can. Oof. Ow. Eh. Going good. Right, we've just taken out that. That makes our lives an awful lot simpler. Ah, uh, you can all... Oop, can you get out of there in time? Damn it. You know what? I don't care if that cannon gets a little bit damaged. That's fine. All of you get in. What we need to do is get over there and kill as much of their stuff as possible before they can bring it all back online. You guys can go off. We don't need to actually do any sustained damage now. Well, not lot, like burst damage. All we need to do is keep them from building any more stuff. So, done. Yeah. Uh, let me just double check here. Oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want those guys targeting there. That's where our men are going to drop off. So let's just leave it that way. Perfect. Uh, and we're keeping their medical base slightly suppressed. They can't get healing while they're repairing it. Ow. Welcome to the parties, pal. Now, now that we've secured a foothold, we turn off our guns. Uh, we get a few people repairing everything just to make sure. And then we go around and finish everything. Finish what we started. Time to kill everything. Oh, and make sure we leave someone in the med bay. Done. Oh, you can only have three jackhammer guys in a building, so long as it's a single-sized building. You get bigger guns later on, they'll take up two spaces, but we haven't quite hit those yet. And you'll notice all their men are dead, and the moment this turret goes down, that's it. We get to capture everything without having to kill everything else. And yeah, all our guns are not firing anymore, so we're golden. Beautiful. Take over, we get extra cash, everyone's happy, and we get a painkiller perk for our soldiers, so they gain 4% more health. Nice. All right, let's skip it forward a bit while we murder a bunch more stuff. Some days, though, you just want to blow stuff up. And while it's nice to sneak across the lines and start attacking stuff and, you know, taking getting lots of money, sometimes you just want to unleash large quantities of bullets at your enemies and watch them scream in pain. Uh, so that's what we're going to try. You can go over there. Come on, repair that up pretty quick. Actually, you can go down there. You guys can maybe get out of there. You're getting a little bit toasty. And now we want people manning all the guns. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Ah, that's two weapons down already, and it's only the start. These things are just, this is why people like Hydra Spam. It just makes mincemeat of things. Okay, you two medic up, you start repairing that. The thing about the Hydra Cannons is, you don't actually need people to help reload them. A mortar gets a bonus from someone reloading it. However, Hydra Cannons don't. Ow. Oh, you need to get out of there right now. You're almost dead. Uh, you get in there. Oh, here comes a fire missile. Oh, quick, hide. Well, that's uh, unfortunate. You three get in there. Put out the fire. Yeah, this guy can't even heal because right now the medical bay has been destroyed. 
Well, that's unfortunate, but doesn't matter. There goes at least two more of their weapons. Yep. Done. Perfect. Ah, now, where were we? They have two guns left. Uh, in that case, we will make mincemeat of them. While sometimes it is nice to just watch the places burn down, it is a little bit faster to just unload. Uh, and these Hydra cannons get so much better as well. As you keep upgrading, they get even more ridiculous. And every time you destroy a building, they reload a little bit faster because one of the perks we have. And, oh, damn it, there's actually one left. Damn it, I completely missed that one. How did I mess that up? Oh, yeah, you, all fire. And you, power on. Done. Ah, excellent. Now, uh, this, w this is one way of doing things. Of course, we could do it other ways. For our next little test, we get ourselves this little setup. Huh. Well, we have to take on... Oh my god, that's a lot of guns. And we have this weird shield generator thing. Now, from what I can see here, they don't have any point defense. So what we probably need to do is use this thing, which comes with fire. Uh, this thing, which... Can we... Yeah, we use that. How much... Yeah, we still got ammo left. Let's see. I'm thinking the plan should be take out the EMP first. We want that EMP down. The EMP goes down, we have less problems. Just the EMP can disable weapons, and if it locks a weapon out, it starts becoming really problematic really fast. Oof. And... Is that missile almost launch it? Damn, those shields are holding just barely. In fact, you... Get in there. No, no, EMP! Oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, you get in there. You get out there and repair those. Oh, wow. This is gonna hurt. Hmm. I think we may be in trouble. That EMP has really, really, really hurt us. Oh, great. The missile finally got out from under EMP just after we managed... Mm, never mind. All right, let's start taking this place apart piece by piece. I think big gun first. Yep, yeah, let's mince it. And at the same time, I think we'll switch you off shrapnel. I think we've killed a couple of their people already, or hopefully we have. Ow. Get out of there. I'm going to want to rotate over some people here who are less injured. Yeah, you can go over there. Oh, man, those those missiles are kind of frustrating. Or the, uh, the constant bombardment. Hey, at least there's a fire over there that's messing them up. Oh, and here comes a whole bunch of weapons trying to kill us. Uh, you, run. Ooh. That was kind of awkward. Uh, next. I think this is sort of this thing. Gotta rotate these guys in and out. But I think if we take out that cannon... Yes. That cannon down, we actually have a chance. You, get out of there. You, get out of there. Uh, no, you stay. Okay, so, they've lost one of their guns. I think, yep, yeah, now it's just a case of grinding them down. We'll eventually build back up that missile battery. In the meantime, those two guys can fire. You can hold fire if you ever get rebuilt. And we'll slowly grind down their weaponry. Actually, might be an idea to take out that one first. Mortars do far more damage. That's two weapons, Dan. Blazing Inferno going off in there and the fire spreading. I like our odds now. Things were a little bit sketchy there at the start, but I think once the EMP went down... Oh, yeah, no, don't hang around that fire, buddy. That'll kill you. Most of their people are injured as well, so this should make things a lot simpler. And with that cut off, we don't have to worry. That'll burn down. Oh, yeah, there's a chunky monkey. And you are finally back online, which means, you know what? Time to start another fire. Things are looking pretty toasty over there. And the shield is just a bit holding. Perfect. And you'll get lots of little missions in like this. I kind of like them. They're fun. Well, fun as it was messing around with these guns, it's time to upgrade. This is the Archeron Precision, Precision Cannon. Yeah, when I find out about these things, I, did, I kind of ignored them, but they are... Yeah, the best gun? Yeah, that's probably the safest way to say it. Now, I'll have to do a little bit of shuffling around because we definitely won't have enough power for this, but... See, right here, we can just about afford this, but our power starts to dip a little bit low. So what we can do is we could install one of these blast furnaces. It runs on ammunition. You burn ammunition to generate power. No, I think, I think I'm good, actually. This thing will just about function fine, so what I'll do instead is we'll stick in the armory, and then at the very start we'll just power it off. We don't need the armory until we actually get into combat, so yeah, perfect. And let me show you why these Archeron cannons, or sniper cannons, are the best in the game. 
Now, if you try and shoot any of these things here, you've got a good chance, which is the same with most cannons. For example, this one here can shoot there, 85, 85, it's got good odds. However, the moment you start trying to dip in, like here is any 50% odds, here's 50%, here's 50, here's 32. These things, 100%, 100%, 100%, at the, even at the very back where it's supposed to be really hard, 75% odds. So we can reach out and touch every single square. This allows you to surgically deconstruct your enemies just a chunk at a time. If this thing is a problem, take it out. Uh, these things do pretty good damage as well. They're like 50 damage per shot. So what you can do is say, look up this thing, see, oh, you have 100 HP. If I was to hit you with two sniper shells, you would instantly be destroyed and we wouldn't have to worry about you. Same with you, you have 100 HP, 80 HP, 100 HP, 250. Okay, that one's a little bit tougher. But this means we can do some serious damage and strategically pick things off. Oh, and you. So, let's see here. What are we going to do with you guys? I think the first thing we're going to want to do is take out that EMP. I hate those things. They are really frustrating to deal with. Though, oh, this guy's going to be winding up very quickly. I would almost like to injure them so the people would stop working on it. Perfect. That does just about enough damage to that. We don't want that EMP getting off too many shots. Oh. Get over there, please. Right now, we have left these guys on hold fire. And then what we can do is something along the lines of this. Actually, what's your hit points? 100 hit points. We could knock out their active defense right now. Though I think... Hmm, actually, if we knock out their active defense, it would make our lives a little bit easier in the long term. But I think reducing their firepower is just more important. So instead, we are going to immediately fire those two. And then... Kaplow. Dead. Instantly killed. This. This is where it kind of becomes broken for me. Because these things just make it so much easier to kill stuff. And how is that EMP still alive? Someone want to kill that EMP? Anyone? Oh, yeah, that EMP got off a shot. I hate those EMPs. Okay, then. Well, with the EMP reduced, uh, we can probably go around checking out a few other things. Hmm. Yeah, you can go. Uh, we'll just change all our cannons over there. Unfortunately, this EMP was a terrible demonstration because it took out one of our turrets here, but that's okay. We'll still kill them. So basically, chip them down with the sniper rifle. Ow. Ooh, that was so close. And then after you finish chipping them down, send over the, the troops to wipe out the last of them. Done. And this way you maximize your money. And just these archer cannons are so good. You can eventually get four of them as you go on through the game. So every time we get a few more, we add them onto them. Ooh. Siege cannon. No, no, no. Just upgrades. Never mind. Let's see if we can buy some more of those archer cannons, though. Ah, excellent. That gets us up to three and now we're sold out. But yeah, this is pretty much what you're going to want to do. And now we start getting into some of the weirder weapons that they introduce in this game. We have the Clandestine's Operations Department. When this fully charges, and it's quite slow, it will convert one of your troops over to their side. Or vice versa if you've got one of them. So you're able to actually convert enemies to your side using this. However, it's very slow. But what normally happens is they stall you out. And then after they've stalled you out, they then, you know, manage to convert one of your guys and tip it in their favor. So what we got to do is we got to rush through all of their stuff and try and kill them. They've also got a nuclear reactor, which makes a nice pop sound. I think the first thing we're going to do, take out that sniper cannon. Then we might take out the cannon just below it. Oh, you. Yeah, no, you can take that as well. Every single weapon we have should be targeted on that. The sniper ones are currently set to hold fire for now because... Ooh, get out of there. There is a lot of firepower coming for that one. You get a little bit of repair up. You, yeah. Oof. Damn it. That's awkward. You, get up there. The thing is, we need those cannons working at up full capacity. Now, let's see what we got here. You have 70 hit points, which means killing you, we should just be able to about do with one cannon. Uh, that means we should probably spread out the damage or something else. Probably this guy. You know what? Let's do that. You can go there. You can go there. And in a minute, everyone else should kick in. Oh, wow. Oh, that was barely close enough. That was uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. Okay, then. Next up. Put those cannons to hold fire again. Pick a second target. We'll probably be this guy down here. Yet, yeah, once this guy's dead, we'll probably pop the reactor. And then we're going to have to start working on this guy. We need to make sure this guy goes sooner rather than later. Otherwise, he's going to cause us huge problems by converting, turning our own guys against us. For our next trick, we're going to use the mortar to start working on this guy. We want to slow that down, get that guy out of there if at all possible. We're also going to use, start targeting that nuclear reactor. 
If we can crack that nuclear reactor, it will cause a nice big tasty explosion. Oof. And that guy just fired, that thing just there fired an incendiary round. We will worry about that in a second. For now, we are going to hit that with everything we've got. Perfect. Once they've fired, and they've got all their accuracy bonuses, we'll get everyone in there to help out put out that fire. Ah, beautiful. That's exactly what you want. And a few of their guys died, took out a whole extra cannon, massacred a bunch of their stuff, and you can now shoot through to their point defense system. You've still got two weapons left in this guy, but I think that is... I think that's all over. There's not really much they can do, unless they get a really lucky shot and kill all of our guys, which is possible. Yep, no, yeah, good thing we got out of there. That could have been problematic. Ooh, nope, run. And once all of their stuff is dead, we pop over with four troops, kill all of their guys. Oh, 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 come here. No, 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 come here. Stop that. Yeah, dead as a dodo. Um, oh, wait, no, there's one left. Damn it. Thought I got them all. And this is basically the joy of the game, figuring out how to kill all of your enemies the nice and easy way. And we get a nice big bonus to our credits. Stand your ground. Okay, we got our access to a new fortress as well. Let's see what else we can do. I think that looks pretty good. We have three of those archer cannons, a couple of basilisks to keep things down. Or not, yeah, they're called basilisks. But they're good at maintaining the damage on something so that it can't get rebuilt. Well, we've got our medic bay to make sure our people get healed up. Fleet command so that we can bring over a balloon to drop a, a troop over. Uh, the armory just so that our troops can be a little bit tougher if we need it. Honestly, you don't really need this, but, well, it's power-wise only cost us two. The power is what we're really struggling with. We've finally put in an active defense control system, and we've got a ballistic radar thing which allows us to our accuracy to go up. And then the only new addition is the blast engine. This thing burns a little bit of ammunition, gives us some, gives us some power, and we use that to power some extra stuff. We are going to be turning some things off, though. We're going to have to at the start, at least to get things running. We could upgrade this a bit and burn some more of our ammunition, in fact... You know what? Yeah, let's upgrade that a scooch. That gives us just a little bit more to work with. Oh, and we could, of course, build a nuclear reactor. It's plus five power for zero cost. But I don't like having one of those in your base. The enemy has a tendency to just try and continuously murder those. And if it does go, well, usually it's it's a wipe. So far, we have 21 winning streak. Honestly, it doesn't matter much in this game. This is more... The wonderful thing about this game is you can be mid-shot, get called away, pause it, and then just come back mid-fight. There's no need to worry about anything. You can stop and start it as you need. By turning off the medic bay and the armory, we're able to get our power requirements down low enough that we don't mind. And we can start charging this up, which is good. Then we just turn down the enemy. Um, we've got these three cannons here, but this is going to be an interesting little chill down. We're going to try and shred that turret. And our point defense, that point defense makes such a difference now that we can afford it. But once these turrets are up and running, which should be shortly, we should be able to snipe out at least a few. What did you go down to? You went down to 70 hit points. That's not quite enough. Well, you know what? That's fine. What we'll do is... Perfect. We are going to fire all these cannons at the same time. This will destroy one of these, and one of our perks is, whenever we destroy something, it reloads all our guns by 9%. So that should catch the basilisk up really quickly. And there you go. Charges everything a little bit faster. And... Uh. I was really hoping we'd get that their little basilisk cannon as well at the same time, but it didn't work out. Never mind, next round. For our next trick, we're going to take out that hydro cannon at the back uh, while continue to maintain pressure on the enemy. And there we go. Another cannon down. That's it. With these things, you can just surgically dismantle the enemy one cannon at a time, and there's almost nothing they can do to stop you. Now, this setup here is designed to slow us down. Basically, they're holding out until this thing launches. This thing is a Charion lander. Basically, it's a troop capsule. Two troops hop in, and then they fly over and land on your base. They cause a big splash of damage when they hit, and everything around them gets stunned. All the troops in the surrounding area. Like, if they landed here, everything in the four adjacent territories would be stunned, and would be able to fight, unfi unable to fight back for about 15 to 20 seconds, and they'd massacre you. So we need to chew our way through to that before we run out of time. Um, also, we don't really have to worry about missiles so much anymore, because our point defense lasers are taking care of that. Those lasers are so handy. After a hard-fought little battle, we've basically broken them. All these turrets up front are down, most of their people are injured badly, they're barely able to repair. We're going to use our two little small cannons here to suppress their repairs, and then we're going to use the sniper cannons to take out their point defense. Once their point defense is down, we can just send over some troops and mop up. And... done! 
So that's most of their stuff done. Now I'd like to take out that armory before we go in so we can slaughter their troops more efficiently, but uh, that might take a second. Ooh, they're repairing that. Oof, I think it might be time to start getting a move on. It's just I'm worried that they may get uh, in on this shortly. You know what? Have these guys target this. That way they'll suppress it, and since no one, none of the guys will be able to operate it, we should be able to... Yeah, we'll get over there before they get that operational, hopefully. Uh, you, quick, go, 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 go. Perfect, and we'll just drop right on top of them. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, don't load it up. Do not load that up. Uh, you know what? I am going to take out their armory. Armory only has 100 hit points, so that should instantly kill it. With their armory down, that removes their machine guns, and it removes a bunch of their equipment. It makes them basically weaker and easier for us to kill. Oh, they're about to repair that. No, you're not allowed to repair that. Sorry. And, yeah. Ah, oh, that guy launched. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, in that case, we're going to stop shooting so we don't shell our own people. Happens an unfortunate amount of times. Now, uh, let's do something here. First off, let's turn off the power to a, this. We don't need it. Once everyone's out, we're going to turn off the power to that. Uh, then we're going to turn on the power to this. Um, yeah, that should be fine. You need to run over there, and you need to run over there. You can see that that's marked for attack. So that's where the rocket is going to land. And since we're not going to be able to stop it... Yep, that's another one bites the dust. Here it comes. Ow! Yeah, buddy, that's not going to work very well for you. Dead. And we'll repair that and get on with our day. Perfect! And let's just make sure this guy, these guys all die. And I think that's everything they got. Yep, we just got to kill the last of the weapons and they're done for. Took a little bit of damage there because we were a bit late taking out that rocket, but... Eh, and this is the joy of the game. Slow but steady little puzzles. Though I think once you get the archer cannons, it sort of makes the game a lot easier. I stopped caring at that point. It's just, it's too easy once you've got your hands on them. Ah, there we go. Another victory would take over. Every single little base has a gimmick. This one's gimmick is these point defense things up the front. And watch what happens when this guy fires. You'll fire, and these things will blast off a whole bunch of counterpoint counter defense. This is the whole point of this. It's going to stop most of your shots if you try and condense them together. Because normally what you try and do is hold stuff and get them all to fire at the same time. In this instance, we're going to want to space things out a little bit more. Uh, you guys can all maybe run out of the way. Oof. Ow. That was a lot of damage. Um. Oh, here it comes again. Nope, out of there. Oh, wow, that actually, that seriously hurt. That is a problem. Hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, we need to turn that off. Turn that on. Uh, you guys need to charge up a bit first. And then immediately go back in. All right, they have just fired their point defense stuff. So we need to kill them. They've got an Alistair Siege Cannon there. I think that's going to be our first target. And now that their point defense is offline, dead. Finished. Finito. Uh, oof. I don't know if that's enough, though. We need to stop them from doing any more damage. We need to make sure that our cannons never go down and that their cannons do. Uh, they're now firing at these guys. Out of the way. Uh, oof. Plans. We're going to turn off our troop transport call-in. It, it's no point calling it in if we don't have the firepower to take care of them. Uh, we're going to have you shoot that. We're going to have you suppress that. Uh, we're going to make sure that, yeah, the, both of them are all out of sync. We don't want them both synced at the same time. Otherwise, they'll both get stopped by the point defense. And these two guys are basically... Uh, oof. That is so much firepower. Oof. Way too much. And we need to get another guy into the medic bay. Yeah, I'm not liking the amount of firepower. This is... Dodgy. <laughs> it's nice when it's closer. Okay, you need to get out of there. You need to get up. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. See, that guy's about to get repaired. That's a problem. So you guys both need to target him. He might get up, but I would prefer to maybe knock out another gun. Actually, wait. What am I doing? Have a little bit of faith. You two guys can target that. You can care get that. Uh oh. Oh god. No. 
I forgot to take out your point defense. No! It's fine. It's fine. Probably. Okay, everyone. Everyone in, in on this. We, uh, we have problems. You get down. Yeah, that's not good. You guys need to... We need to really clamp down on... Oof. Yeah, I think this could be our first wipe. Now, if you're repairing the medical bay, your troops that are repairing it can't heal. However, if you get the troops that are repairing it to, say, move out a little bit and have someone else take over, they can heal. So, you... Yeah, you need to... Nope. Get back in again. That's messy. <sighs> thing is, we can't keep them suppressed, and their firepower is just becoming more intense. Ooh. Okay, we need to get a couple of people out of here. You guys need to go there. And we got one up. And you can fire. In fact, both of you can fire. Perfect. Okay, never mind. I think I think that the, the fear is over. We should have a good chance of stopping them now again. That last volley, they decided to send a flashbang, which completely messed them up. They didn't do enough damage with it. Oof. Now, I'm thinking... How much are the hit points on that? 100 hit points? I think their active defense system has to go. If we can take out their active defense system, their whole gimmick is gone. With that down, we can just pick them apart, piece by piece by piece. Fortunately, it'll take us an entire round. Uh, let's wait until they fire their point defense to make sure it's definitely expended. Excellent. Okay, both done. In that case, you. Point defense needs to be exploded. Perfect. Uh, you guys get over there. Nice. With their point defense offline, they can't stop us from grinding them down. These guys here... There'll be no protection for them anymore. You get back in there. That was tough. That, like, one of my mess-ups there almost killed us. So, we've basically ground them down. Slowly but surely, we managed to grind them over. This is not the best method by any means, but I've just found it's the most consistent. Normally what you're supposed to do is come in, have a look at what the enemy's got, then build your construct to take them on. I'm too lazy to do that. I want to come up with something that's sort of a Swiss army knife that does everything, and it seems these archer cannons just allow you to... Well, cut them apart piece by piece, starting at their most vital organs, and then once you've removed their vital organs, they usually fall apart, and then it's just a case of grinding them down and sending over a troop to claim them. Well, me hearties. Time for a little bit of invasion. Hey, right. let's kill them all. They don't have any guns or anything like that, so it should be a simple case of slaughtering them. Yeah, and you just ran away through all of our guys. That's not a good idea, buddy. Oh, seriously, just come here and die already. They do try and run for some strange reason. I don't get it. It's not like there's many places to run. And once we kill this last turret, it's game over. Their, their gun can't even get through the point defense. This is why point defense is so good. It does save you so much damage that it's like having an extra dupe healing you all the time. I'm done. And that's all we've got time for with Redcon today. Now again, I gotta just put this up because I've played this game in the past. I saw it when I was doing the channel update that I'd put in a bunch of hours and I, it kind of stuck in the back of my brain. So then when I was having trouble getting uh, the Prison Architect episode out, I was like, oh, maybe I can do a little bit of Redcon. It's been a while since I've played. I did have a bit of an itch to play something a little bit simpler. Not exactly a tactical genius game, but it is a little bit fun to sit there and plink away and kill stuff and you can pop off and come back anytime. Is it a good game? No. Um, the problem is it's just too formulaic, as in you just keep putting down these archer cannons, and there's a few other things you can do later on, but by and large there's nothing too complex about it. I mean, you could do fun stuff with making an all-EMP fortress, but then you'll come up against something that's resistant to it, or you can make an all-cannon fortress like these Alistair Siege Cannons seem great, but unfortunately they get intercepted too easily, they get shut down too much by point defense, and they're just not efficient. These sniper cannons are just basically the get-out-of-jail-free card that you've always wanted. In fact, this is a very inefficient fortress. The only reason we're able to get away with sticking in so much random junk is because we've got these archer cannons and they allow us to do what we can do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to cram in the ability to capture all of these places so that we can get more money to buy more junk that we don't need, because we're just going to buy archer cannons. Oh, did I mention there's a hundred levels of this stuff to it? Yeah, it's one of those games you come back every so often and play an odd time. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. This was our uh, little detour into Redcon. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.